What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gustin. I'm back in the physics classroom. Today we're doing our, neck, our Newton's Second Law Lab. The goal with the Newton's Second Law Lab is to uh, find a mathematical and graphical relationship between force and acceleration. We spent the entire first unit discussing that forces cause changes in velocity, or objects in motion stay in motion, or objects at rest stay at rest, unless acted upon by an outside net force that basically states that outside net forces cause changes in velocity. A change in velocity is also known as an acceleration. So we spent the entire first unit trying to figure out, is there an outside force on my object or my system? And if there was, well, there was an acceleration. And if there was no outside force, there was no acceleration. This was the difference between our horizontal motion and our vertical motion in projectiles. Outside forces cause acceleration. Uh, today, our lab is, uh, designed to help us understand the mathematical graphical relationship between force and acceleration. Here's the setup, okay? On the packet it says we have a hover puck. We don't actually have a hover puck, we have a cart instead. And this cart can connect to our iPads and this cart will go ahead and tell us acceleration um, when we want it to. This cart is attached to a string over a pulley and that string has a mass hanging from it. All right, so if I roll this thing back, what you'll see is that there is a mass dangling from it over here, all right? This mass is going to pull through the string and on the cart and cause this cart to accelerate across the table, okay? Now, the mass itself doesn't accelerate the cart. It's actually the Earth's pull on that mass that pulls down on the string that pulls the cart across the table. So it's not mass that causes the acceleration. It's force, and in this case, it's the force of gravity, which we just named weight force, okay? So whatever mass I hang, that is the weight that pulls through the string and pulls the cart across. That's what we're gonna call our net force in this experiment. So anytime I change that mass, I'm changing the net force on my cart. So let's look and see how this is gonna run. Because I'm looking for the relationship between uh, force and acceleration, I wanna make sure I hold mass of the entire experiment constant. I don't want that to be a variable, so I'm gonna hold that constant. So anytime I take a mass off of my cart in order to hang it, I wanna make sure I replace the old mass on the cart. That way the cart and the hanging mass is consistent throughout the whole experiment. It's a control variable. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and now that I know the masses are set on there, I can hang one mass and let it fall. And as it falls, this thing's taking data, sending it to my iPad, telling my iPad what the acceleration was over that interval of time. Once I have that, I'm gonna take off the hanging mass and replace it with a new mass. The new mass, I will record its mass in my data table, and then I'll hang the mass from the pulley and record that acceleration. And I'll continue to do that over and over and over again. Replace the mass, put a new hanging mass on, and take all this acceleration data, okay? I've got some data on the board. If you have your own data and you were just here for the introduction, skip past this next part. But if you weren't here and you missed the lab, here's our data, all right? The data is net force of the hanging mass. Here's my hanging mass. We said this is the force that pulls the whole system and causes the acceleration. This force is Fg of mass two. So I would take whatever mass I had hung, multiply it by 9.8 because that's G on this planet, and that spits out my net force for the system. Over here, this comes from the cart. These are the accelerations that the cart told my iPad that I had when I was changing the weights hanging from the string. Over here is the sum of my mass. It's the mass of the cart plus the masses sitting on top plus the hanging masses. I made sure that all of these trials had the same mass because like I said before, mass needs to be a control variable in this experiment. So I made sure every single trial had a mass of 2.287 kilograms to make sure it was not some kind of nefarious variable giving me some different results, okay? If you didn't have data and now you have it, maybe try pausing the video and just doing the rest of the lab by yourself. Uh, if you're still like, I'm not sure what the lab is supposed to be doing, I'm very lost, I'm very sick, I'll go ahead and walk you through some of the analysis, okay? From this part, we wanted to, uh, to generate a graph. 
this graph, we're going to put acceleration, even though it's our a dependent variable on the x-axis, and we're going to put f net on our y-axis, even though it's our control variable. I'm sorry, even though it's our independent variable. After I do this, I end up with a line. The data I plot gives me a pretty strong line. My correlation is pretty high when I do this uh, with this data, so it ends up being uh, a line, which is fantastic. This means that my proportional relationship, f net, is related to a. As forces get larger, accelerations get larger with them by the same factor. There's no square, there's no square root. As forces get larger, accelerations get equally larger. Okay? This leads us to then generating a linear equation where F net equals the slope times A. I need to figure out what the slope is, but this is the equation I'm going to generate. It's something like this. I look at my slope value, and my slope value comes out to be 2.38. And in this case, it's newtons per meters per second squared, which is a really, really weird slope. So because I don't know what that slope is, like those units don't make sense to me, I look back at my lab and I say, is 2.38 similar to any other number I see over here? 2.38, uh, oh wait. I mean, it's not spot on, but it's really close to this number. Interesting, 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 interesting. What I find out, if I actually go ahead and start like messing around with these units, is that this slope is not just newtons per meters per second squared. This slope actually is kilograms, which matches or is pretty darn close to the sum of the mass in my system. So what does this slope tell me? This slope tells me the mass of my system. It tells me how much mass this force was acting on. This force was acting on 2.287 kilograms, but based on my data, it's 2.38. Here's my equation. F net equals MA. And again, it's Newton's first law just in math terms now, right? Outside forces acting on masses cause accelerations. This is Newton's first law, but now it's just an equation. Now we have a way of understanding it and, and uh, a, a way of like solving for acceleration as opposed to just saying, here is the acceleration. So without velocity, without time, without distance, if we know the force acting on a mass, we can now find acceleration. This is our fourth equation, okay? On the equation sheet, it's written this way. It's written A, with a little like half arrow, is equal to the sum of the forces over M. And force and acceleration both have these little half arrows on them. This makes it look like real fancy physics, real old school fancy physics, even though these equations mean the same thing. All this equation sheet equation says to us is that acceleration, uh, I'm sorry, the direction of acceleration is equivalent to the direction of the net force, of the total forces. These two things are equal to each other. Not the force and the acceleration, but the direction. If the acceleration is left, I'm sorry, it's rightward, it's because the net force is rightward. Again, outside forces cause accelerations, so it would only make sense that the outside force and the acceleration are pointed in the same direction. Okay, these are the big ideas from our Newton's second law lab. We now have an equation, we have a new graph, we have a proportionality statement, and we know that outside forces, or we're reaffirming the idea that outside forces that act on masses do in fact cause accelerations. Okay, finish your lab up. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see ya!